So please welcome Joyce Kaufman. Yeah. Um, be careful what you say. No, no, no. Uh, but I really, you know, look, the, obviously, um, we got to watch firsthand how vile and vicious and completely immoral the left can be when they have targeted somebody. And uh, I've been saying a lot of outrageous things for a long time, and nobody really paid much attention to it. What ended up happening, though, was the political mood in this country shifted, and people were looking for a way to get back their voice. And I'm grateful that uh, I was able to help people, because I, I didn't do anything. You guys listened. I kept saying, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And little by slowly, you started doing things. Callie went to Washington with me with 5,000 pairs of shoes. Danita went up to lobby. And they felt that sense of empowerment. And they came back and they talked to other people. And they said, you don't have to sit by and watch these things happen. You can participate. You can hit, make your voice be heard. And I will forever be grateful for the efforts of individuals in this community. Because part of what ended up happening was that we were able to begin to identify candidates who had a chance to run in races from the city commission all the way up to the United States Congress and the United States Senate. And we said we'll do everything we can to help them get elected. We fought off all the naysayers who said, and I want to remind you of this because you need to remember this, the leadership of the Republican Party felt that Alan West was unelectable in District 22. And the talk behind the scenes, and I'm not ashamed to say it out loud, was that a black man could not be elected in that district and that there's no way that they would overcome the machine that was in place. And I went on the air a long time ago, three years ago, I and mean, I can't even calculate how long it was, and I said, it's time for you to show America that we do not judge people by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That's right. And everybody listened to the man speak on my show and began to support him. And through the grassroots, things began to happen that seemed almost unbelievable, including his first run, where he came in an Obama landslide within eight points, really, when you think about it, of defeating an incumbent in a Democratic election. And it, and it empowered us. And he was bold and, you know, and, and, and steadfast enough to say, if I do it again, will you guys help me? And we all said, we're yeah. there, we'll yeah. do it, we'll, find, we'll figure out how to raise the money. Because Alan came to me after the defeat and he said, how much money do I need to compete in this election? And I said, you're going to have to raise $4 million. And I thought he would go away like everybody else when I tell them that. And he said, oh, okay. And I said, all right. Well, you know, he, he said, well, how do you do it? And I said, well, if you're willing to, to listen, I'll, I'll give you some advice. You'll start to, uh, you know, do the right things and say the right things and empower other people to support you. And I said, and the money will come. And, of course, you know, Wayne is here with a camera. Had it not been for the, that moment when I pushed Alan on that stage at the Tea Party at Revolution and that video was shot, there's a whole lot of millions of dollars that wouldn't have been raised in this campaign. Wow. So it was definitely a Tea Party moment. Way to go, Wayne! Yeah. 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 And, that's the kind, and then Wayne went about whatever it is magic that, that they do to get that video as much exposure. Look, my video that Wayne shot on the corner at the celebration of the um, Israeli rally has now approached 300, it's at 300,000 views. So whatever it is that he does, he does it very well. And whatever it is that Alan and I say resonates with people and encourages people and empowers people. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. I have no regrets. I literally took the career, uh, you know, risk of a lifetime. I turned my show into a vehicle to, to promote candidates, which is something that has hardly ever did done. I allowed all the opposition all the time they wanted. They were invited. I offered Ron Klein. 
he could co-host my show for, you know, a week. And I would keep my microphone closed and only do my commercials. I said, you will have as much time as you want on this program. And of course, he chose not to ever use it. And that was a, a terrible mistake on his part. Yes. Because what ended up happening was that Alan's word went out and, and Klein's never had a chance. And people were attracted to this man who stands for all the right principles, who served his country for 22 years, and who scares the hell out of the liberals. <laughs> he scares them. And, and, this, and this electronic lynching by proxy that went on this week is such an outrage. You have to understand that next week when all of the facts come out, this is the real Rule 13. Isolate, ridicule, escalate, and annihilate. And they chose to use me as the first battery against this guy. This was never about me and what I said. This was about this enormous stature, this nine and a half point victory that our Congressman-elect Alan West was taking up to Washington, D.C. This was in-your-face politics within 12 hours of my... Within 12 hours of the announcement that I was going to be his chief of staff, the machine went into motion. My first signal was a phone call from my son who said, Mom, I don't know what's going on, but within the next 24 hours, you are going to be the most reviled person in all of America. So I just want you to be prepared. And, uh, and I've seen it happen to other colleagues of mine over the years, and I've always talked to them, and they've always said, you will not believe the speed with which this happens. They said, in 24 hours, your life will be completely changed. And that's exactly what happened. And I did not want to break down this, the stature, not one inch, of this man, and uh, I, I resigned. And, and I have no regrets. Uh, it was a great experience. I have had uh, an enormous impact on how Congressman-elect Alan West uh, thinks, how he will operate as a congressman. He understands that he has a mandate, and that mandate comes from the electorate, not from special interests, which he did not take money from. Very few PACs, only leadership PACs of other congressmen. And all of that money, and it ended up being six and a half million dollars was raised from us. Yeah. All over the country, the us's, all over the country, his average donation is $78, okay? That's powerful. Six and a half million divided by 78. And, and remember, there were a lot of five and ten dollar donations in there. It's a, it, it, it represents a lot of people. And he knows that. He understands that. I know that. This was never about me, it was never about him. This was about a, a, a group of people in this country who are taking back their power. And that doesn't mean that we're taking back the government. It just means that we will have a voice and that they're going to have to sit down at the table with us now because we didn't just send up Congressman-elect Alan West. We sent up a lot of people. And this time, they know who they answer to. So I'm very hopeful. As for me, I... Um, I'm madder than hell. <laughs> Look out. I, I'm not going to become toned down. <laughs> if anything, if you heard my show yesterday, yes. Yes. I have now decided that it's not bad being the kingmaker. <laughs> that means that there are people in this community who we're going to raise up and we're going to get elected and we're going to take back 19 and we're going to take 20. Yeah. And we're going to take 23 yes. in 2012. Yeah. Uh, as far as my future, uh, uh, they have unleashed the Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> and they should only know how many offers are pouring in now to make my voice heard, not just here in South Nation Florida, yeah. but all yeah. Nationwide. They want the book, 
Good girl. Read the book off her. All right. So there, there's a ton of support out there for the cause. See, nobody worried about what this meant to me as an individual to be reviled on national television, to have my words taken out of context, to have edited versions of speeches playing in a constant recycle, to try and link me to the closing of the schools in Broward County on Wednesday is the most despicable and disturbing thing to come out of all of this. But all it does is embolden me empower me. I know who the bloggers are. I know who the columnists are. I know who the reporters are that were complicit in misrepresenting everything and in, in, in ha harassing me and in harassing Congressman-elect Alan West. And now they're going to have to deal with me three hours a day, five days a week, and on street corners on the weekend. Yeah. And they're all going to get called out by name. And they're all going to have to answer for their lack of journalistic credibility and standards because it is duplicitous of people who have covered me for years to allow this to happen, and not just allow it to happen, but to participate in it and to do the things that they did for the, for the ratings or the salacious nature of the story. <laughs> what might have happened the first time I was walking in the hall behind Congressman Barney Frank? <laughs> what really might have happened if I was there on the day when Congressman Alan West enters the uh, chamber to speak with the Congressional Black Caucus? It would have been pretty interesting to see if I was able to actually make this conversion into the quiet voice of reason behind uh, Congressman Allen West. I believe I could have done it. He believed I could have done it. But I'm not going to get that chance. So trust me, somebody's going to pay for stealing this dream. Yeah. Don't stop. Don't stop standing up for the right thing. It doesn't matter you know, what names they call us. It doesn't matter how they uh, accuse us of the very things they're guilty of. This has been a perfect example of projection. Uh, if, if a case could be made that somehow that speech that I gave on July 3rd, the day before my father died, mind you, yeah. if someone could actually make a case, there was not one single act of violence that, that followed that speech people who were in that audience understood exactly what I was talking about. The only insightful person in all of this was Rachel Madcap, who decided to play it on a disproportionate reel and rev as many crazies up as she possibly could. And those crazies that watch her show are not us. We don't watch that show. The crazies that came crawling out of the woodwork uh, and, and, and making death threats against me or making this false uh, you know, claim against the children and the public buildings in Broward County had nothing to do with that speech that I gave that day. Nothing. It had to do with this orchestrated attempt to make uh, Congressman-elect Alan West's choice look bad and therefore make him look bad. Don't let them steal your victory. We won That's right. on November 2nd. We won. And they would like to steal. They're so mad that they want to make you think you didn't win. You won. We won. We're going to win again in 2012. We're going to win again in 2014. And we're going to win again in 2016. Not because of, uh, of, of an effort that we have where we have a complicit media propping us up. We're going to go against all of the normal ways of doing this. This is grassroots politics at its finest. You keep doing what you've been doing. You keep telling the world what you believe. Because look what's happened. People who agree with us are finally stepping up. They're finally getting off their behinds. And they're not watching American Idol. And they're standing up for the principles of the United States of America. This is the greatest country on earth. And the fact that we have leadership up there right now who doesn't believe that tells me one thing. We need to replace them with leaders who do. God bless you. And God, God bless you. God bless you.